If you have experienced a traumatic event in your life or the chronic stress resulting from an abusive or manipulative relationship or the trauma of a discovery in that relationship, such as infidelity, then you know the feeling that your life has been turned upside down. Maybe you've experienced that brain fog, difficulty concentrating or racing thought. Perhaps also you know the feeling that you are emotionally overwhelmed at times or emotionally shut down at others. And you find yourself asking, is healing from trauma possible? And if so, what does it look like? Hi, my name is Jonathan Glover and I'm a therapist working at the Marriage Recovery Center. And today I'm going to talk to you about healing from trauma, specifically the trauma resulting from an emotionally abusive relationship. Healing from this type of trauma is often complicated by the fact that we are simultaneously trying to repair the relationship itself while navigating our own individual healing process. The most important factor, the first thing that needs to be addressed when healing from trauma is safety, both physical and emotional safety. As we move through the healing process, it's important that we do not experience new traumatic events or to re-traumatize ourselves through the process of healing itself. To do this, it becomes important to identify the source of trauma. In an emotionally abusive relationship, this is not the perpetrator themselves, but the aggressive, manipulative, deceptive, demeaning or controlling behaviors. Identifying the and treating these behaviors is one way to obtain safety, but it doesn't really help to heal the victim. It can help to prevent future damage, but it doesn't really address the, the damage that has already been caused. This is often a stuck point that people describe because they're trying to repair the relationship while simultaneously trying to heal from their own trauma, which has been caused by the perpetrator in that relationship itself. It's a bit like you're driving down the road with a rabid dog in the front seat with you, snarling and biting at you, and you're screaming out the window, help, help, I can't drive with this rabid dog attacking me and somebody shoots a tranquilizer dart through the window and the dog falls asleep. Everything's good now, right? The dog isn't attacking you, so you should be able to drive, right? Well, no, nothing has really been done to address the fact that you're terrified at the thought of when the dog is going to wake up. This also brings up another key ingredient to obtaining safety and that is boundaries. Boundaries not only serve to protect you now, but also to prevent future harm. In the case of the rabid dog, a boundary might look like putting the dog in a cage for the rest of the trip, or just telling yourself, if the dog wakes up, I'm gonna get out of the car. In the case of an abusive relationship, boundaries, might be important to surrounding topics such as finances, communication, sex, parenting, work. Boundaries also help to clarify expectations in these areas. But boundaries or the idea of setting boundaries can be very difficult and scary and uncomfortable as a thought especially for somebody who has been the victim of an emotionally abusive relationship, sometimes for years or even decades. Boundaries are not set with the intention of controlling someone else's behavior, but rather identifying which interactions, environments, or behaviors cause us to feel uncomfortable or unsafe, and then creating a plan for how we are going to respond to those situations. 
boundaries are where one person ends and we begin. Oftentimes, in emotionally abusive relationships, the victim has been conditioned to be so hyper-focused on the perpetrator's needs and messages and emotions that their own emotions get put on the back burner. The next phase of the healing process focuses on pulling you back off of the back burner and identifying or rediscovering who you really are, what your needs are, where are your strengths and your supports. It's important to do this because in emotionally abusive relationships, there's so much messaging around who we are or what we're expected to be. So it's important for the victim to identify where these messages originate. And if the messages really line up with, with their own goals or values or beliefs. This is often a difficult process for many people because as you start to rediscover who you really are and what you're capable of, there often comes a realization of what has been taken from you and the full effect that the emotional abuse has had on so many areas of your life, not only in this one relationship. This can result in overwhelming feelings of grief, loss, anger, depression, sometimes even shame and guilt. Oftentimes, victims look to the perpetrator for recognition and validation of the damage that they have inflicted. Of course, absolutely, especially if you're still in that relationship with the person that caused that damage. That would be the ultimate goal, right? To receive full recognition and validation for the extent of damage that has been caused. But that isn't always possible. And it doesn't mean that healing is not possible. Healing from emotionally abusive relationships and traumatic experiences is possible even without the perpetrator giving us that. It's not a necessary component. It certainly would be nice. It absolutely would be nice, but it's not a requirement for healing. This is really difficult to hear sometimes. A lot of victims really would feel a sense of relief knowing that their perpetrator fully comprehends the extent of the damage that they have caused. Exploring your own trauma response and the emotional pain that has been caused can be a very difficult part of the trauma healing process. The next phase of healing can be difficult to comprehend until you really begin to feel it because it focuses on acceptance. It is not acceptance of the damage that has been caused. I mean, certainly not. It's not accepting the abusive behaviors themselves, but recognition that you did experience trauma. And those experiences have shaped who you are today. A big part of acceptance is in accepting who you are today, including all the painful emotion, as well as your strengths and your value. Following this, the focus of the healing process becomes on restoration and repair, heading in the direction that you want to head in your life. So yes, healing from trauma is possible. Even the trauma resulting from an emotionally abusive relationship. It can be a long process and at times it can be uncomfortable or difficult and even scary. It can be helpful to have somebody help guide and support you through this healing process or just answer questions that you might have. If you have any questions about healing from an emotionally abusive relationship or other trauma, 
contact our client care team at marriagerecoverycenter.com or check the links provided below.